Hi everyone, welcome to episode 14. So, uh, just two simple things that I have planned for today. First of all, uh, I'd like to be generating a new map each time that the player kills all of the enemies in the current wave. And secondly, I'd like to implement a simple game over screen. It'll obviously just pop up once the player dies and will give us the option to play again if we want. So let's start off in the spawner class. Uh, we have this next wave method here, which is being called once at the beginning and also at uh, whenever the player finishes a wave. So what we want is to create an event so that any class that would like to be notified when a new wave begins can just subscribe to that event. So let's go up here. I'm going to say public event. I'm going to use a system.action. So we want this event to return void and we want it to have one parameter, which is just uh, which which wave are we currently on? Is it the first, second, third wave? Uh, that sort of thing. So just an integer to uh, store the wave number. Okay, we can call this on new wave. All right, so then in the in the next wave method, I'm quickly going to delete that debug. We don't need that anymore. In the next wave method, we first want to check if the on new wave event is not equal to null, because we'll get errors if we call it, if it's null. And if it's not null, then we'll say, okay, call the on new wave event, and we can pass in the current wave number. Okay. So now that that's set up, let's go into our map generator and we're going to create a method here on new wave takes an int uh, wave number. And all this will do is set the map index equal to wave number minus one since our maps are stored in an array starting at zero. That's why we're minusing one over here and then we'll generate a new map. Okay. so. In the start method, instead of just straight up generating a new map, we want to subscribe to the spawners on new wave event. So we need to find the spawner, find object of type spawner. Okay. Uh, whoops. Dot on new wave, and we subscribe our own on new wave method to that. Uh, shouldn't have parentheses there. Okay, that should be working. Let's try it out. Um, I think I'm just quickly going to go into my spawner and set this enemy count to one so we can not have to kill all of those. Um, so let's try this. And okay, it takes us to the next map. Um, currently falling off the map. Uh, but yeah, so we only have two maps currently defined in our maps array. So just have to make sure that however many, however many waves you have, you have the same number of maps. Um, so with the... Uh, with the start of each new wave, I'd like the player's position to just sort of reset to the center of the map. So let's go into the spawner. Um, it can maybe handle the resetting of the player's position since that's kind of falls under spawning duties, I suppose. Uh, so over here, we can have void reset player position. And all it needs to do is just say player T, our player transform. Uh, set the position equal to, and we can get the central tile from our map by going map dot uh, tile from position, and we'll just give it factor three dot zero. So that's that's returning the tile, which is a transform. So we want to say the position of that tile, and then maybe we want the player to fall in uh, just from a little bit above the map, perhaps. Uh, so I'll just add vector three dot up multiplied by three there. Okay, so with each new wave, we we'll want to say reset player position. And now if we play again, I should no longer be falling off the map. Let's try it. Okay, that's good. I'm restarting over here. So next up, game over screen. So let's create a new UI canvas over here. And I'm going to set this to scale with the screen size so that our UI automatically resizes if we resize the game screen. And I'm going to set my reference re resolution to maybe 1280 by 720 since that's what I'm usually working with. Um, yeah, let's let's go ahead and create a UI image. And I'm going to put this in the center, 00, zero and I'm going to scale it out to fit the screen so that will be 1280 by 720. 
and this is going to be a fade plane. In other words, we can now fade our game in and out. So once once the player dies, we'll want to fade the screen out and then pop up game over and maybe a button saying, you know, play again, whatever. Um, so I'm going to call this fade. Okay, and I'm going to create some text over here. And not going to worry terribly about making this pretty at the moment. We'll do that later on in the series. Um, but okay, let me just go into 2D mode so I can easily move this text around. I'd like it to sort of automatically resize to fit the box that I'm giving it. So we can just say best fit over here. And I'll give it a full range of sizes to play with. So from 1 to 300. Put this somewhere in this top center perhaps. Ah, that's snapping. Okay, and in here I'll just write game over. Okay, that looks good. Well, doesn't particularly. We need a nicer font at some point, but it will do the job for now. Uh, let's also create a button. Okay, size this up as well. Go into the text part of that. Just say best fit. I'll give this 1 to 300 again. And say play again. Okay. Is that in the center? Not quite. All right. So I want to put the uh, the game over and the button uh, just under a single object. So I'll go create empty child. Can call this my game over UI. And I'll put those both under there. And now we can just easily toggle this on and off. Okay, so I'll turn it off for now. And I will have my fade plane. Uh, not faded in at all. And let's now create a C sharp script to handle our UI. So I'm going to call this game UI. And I will attach this to the canvas, I think. Um, where's it gone? There we go. Let's open that up. Uh, I guess we'd like to be notified when the player dies. So we'll want to subscribe to that event, we can maybe have uh, avoid on game over. Okay, so at the start of the game, we will want to find the player. And we'll say on death, and we'll subscribe our on game over method to that. Okay, so when the player dies, on game over will be called and we can fade out. Um, so we're going to want to have control over that image UI that we created to be our fader. Uh, so I'm going to need to say using unity engine dot UI. Okay, that will give us access to all things like images and text. Um, let's go public image fade. Um, I'll just call this my fade plane, I guess. Okay, let's make a little fade method. Um, well, it will actually be a coroutine since we want it to happen over time. Um, oh, don't know what I'm thinking. We say I enumerator, of course. And I'll call this fade. I can take in a color, sort of the fade from color, color two, and a sort of float for the time, uh, the time that we want the fade to take. Okay, so float speed will of course just be one divided by the time. And then we can just have a percent for how far into our fade we are, which starts at zero, and a while loop while percent is less than one. Uh, while it's less than one, we want to increase that by time dot delta time multiplied by our fade speed. And then we can say fade plane dot color is equal to and we can just use this handy color dot lerp method to go uh, from our from color to our to color and give it our percent. Okay, then we just want to yield return null so that it skips to the next frame. Okay, so in on game over, we'll want to say start coroutine uh, fade and we'll want to go from color.clear to color.black, not blue, black. And for time, um, I'll maybe just give it one second for now. Okay, so having faded in, um, I'm missing a bracket here. Having, having faded the screen, we'll want the, uh, 
the sort of button and that game over text we created to pop up. So let's get a reference to that holder object, public transform uh, game over, oops, game over UI. So over here we can just say game over UI dot set active. Uh, okay, let me make that a game object rather. Doesn't need to be a transform. Set active true. Okay. So let's assign that. We've got to assign our game over UI. We've got to assign our fade plane. Let's save and. Have we done everything? Did I finish writing the script? I believe so. Um, so let's try this out. Uh, okay, got to wait for it to kill us. Doot, 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 and game over. Okay, so at the moment play again is doing nothing at all. So we'll fix that right now. Um, one Kind of cool thing we could do instead of having to wait for this enemy to spawn in you know, if, we, if we're testing this a bunch of times it, it gets a bit annoying i guess what we can do let me find the player class where's it hiding over here or actually i rather want the living entity class uh, in the die method well just before the die method we can do this cool little thing where we say context menu and we can give it a string, maybe call this self-destruct, just like so. And what this means is that every, uh, every living entity, if we right-click on their script in the inspector, now has a self-destruct button, and we can use that to great effect. Cool. So uh, let's get that that game uh, that play again button functioning. Um, so in the in the game UI script, I'm going to have a section which deals with input uh, of the UI variety. So we'll want a method public void uh, start new game, and all that will do is say application dot load level. And I think I just called the scene game. Um, just make sure that whatever your scene is called, you put the same name in that uh, in that method. Okay, so now we go onto our button, and in the on click list, we add our canvas, which has got the uh, it's got the game UI script attached, and we say start new game. Simple as that. Very nice system. Um, so that should be working. Let's try it out. I'll go into my player, use my self-destruct. And if I press play again, here we go. We're in the, we're in the level. Um, sadly, my lighting's broken, which seems to be a bug in Unity at the moment. I am currently using version 5.2.1. So there is a workaround and Maybe, maybe by the time you're watching this, uh, this bug will no longer exist, but if it does, the workaround is to go into, where is the lighting? Into the lighting, I'm just gonna drag this over here, and we can turn off, if I can find the button, we can turn off auto. So now it will no longer automatically uh, rebake the lighting. So this does mean that if we change some lighting, uh, we'll have to manually rebuild it. But on the positive side, okay, probably it's gonna be quicker just to let it kill me. On the positive side, if I press play again, I've got my nice lighting still. Okay, so uh, we've got a little bit more structure to our gameplay now. Uh, basically, I mean, the gameplay is really there. All we want to do now is to add more guns, add some cool visual effects, get some menus, sound effects, all that stuff. That's basically just juicing it up at the moment, uh, but the, the foundation is there. So I think the next couple of episodes should be fun, uh, just getting the game to, a, to an interesting state. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching, and until next time, cheers.